Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to write the equation of an ellipse, given some pieces of information. So really the main important thing about you know, writing the equation of the ellipse is understanding our two equations. We have uh, one equation for ellipse when the major axis is horizontal, and we have another equation for ellipse when our major axis is vertical. And the, really the only difference between the two equations is a squared is under the x when the major axis is horizontal, and a squared is under the y when the major axis is vertical. Now, basically, what we need to do then is determine which equation we're going to use for each and every problem. And to do that, um, I think it's helpful to identify the information we have as well as plot the information so we can find the major axis. And, and once, we know, once we find the major axis, we can determine is it horizontal or vertical. One last thing I forgot to mention, um, all of these problems have a center at 0, 0. So that's a good starting point uh, for us to know is that all of them are going to be starting at 0, 0. And all right, so first thing we're going to do is plot the information we know. Now, plus or minus 4 comma 0 can be rewritten as 4 comma 0, negative 4 comma 0. OK, so I go over 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Those are my two vertices. And there's my center. So just by plotting the first piece of information I have, I have two vertices. And what that should tell us by looking at an ellipse, we know that the major axis is horizontal because the vertices are the endpoints of the major axis. So if those are the endpoints of the major axis, we know the major axis has to be horizontal. So therefore, I'm going to use this equation because this is the equation of a horizontal major axis for an ellipse. Okay? The next thing um, we want to do is plot the other information, which we have co-vertices, which is going to be plus or minus 2. OK, so those are your co-vertices. All right, and now what we need to do is just figure out. So if you look at the equation, um, we have h and k represents our center, which we know is at 0, 0 at the origin. So we got that taken care of. All we need to figure out now is what is a and b. Remember, a is the distance from the vertice from the center. So how far am I traveling from the vertice to the center? 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Um, now, again, you could say here, oh, you're traveling negative 4. Yes, but it's the absolute distance. It's the length that we're traveling, not looking at direction. Um, Covertice, or B, represents the distance from the covertices to the center. So you look over here, and you can say that that is 2. So all I'm simply going to do is plug in the information that I'm given um, into my equation. Now, remember, again, the major point, though, the major thing about this is my major axis is horizontal. So I have to use this equation. So I'm going to use x minus 0, because that's the x-coordinate, over um, a squared, which is 4, plus y minus 0 squared over b squared, which is 2. No, no, not there. That was a good marker, too. And then, oh, geez, now I'm messing all up. 2 squared, and that's equal to 1. So now I just go ahead and simplify this. x minus 0 squared is just going to be x squared over 16. And that's going to be plus y squared over 4 equals 1. Um, we have c, but we don't need to figure out c. That's not part of the uh, equation of an ellipse. But there we go. All done. All right, let's go ahead and look over to this one. Um, now this one, we have vertices and co-vertices, but then we have some radicals, which it doesn't really look too much fun. Um, but again, the major important thing is, again, just plotting the information. So we know we have a center at 0, 0. Now notice I'm doing 0 plus or minus 2. Even forget about the radical. If I was just doing 0 plus or minus 2, that means I'm going up 2 and down 2, right? Um, now square root of 2, radical 2, that's going to be square root of 8, um, I believe. So that's going to be between, you know, square root of 8 is between 2 and 3. Um, so anyways, so that's going to be like up there. But anyways, what I want you to understand is we're going up or down, right? So actually even forget about plotting it. I just know one, two, I know the vertice somewhere there. And somewhere here, if you even want to plug it into your calculator and figure out what exactly it is, I think it's 2.828427.1, maybe. Um, but you know, just know that it's vertical. Now that I know that my two vertices are vertical, I know the major axis is vertical. And what's so important about that is rather than using this equation, I'm going to use this equation. Rather than putting the a squared under the x, I'm going to put the a squared under 
the y. Now, what exactly is a squared? Well, a, oh, well, we'll get to that. We know that the distance from the center to your vertice, or from the vertice to your center, is a. So that's going to be 2 square root of 2. Now, b is your covertice, which is the square root of 5. So that's going to be square root of 5. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. So again, that's between 2 and 3 as well. Um, so that's like right there and right there. And that distance is square root of 5. And that's going left or right. So we know a is equal to 2 squared of 2 and b is equal to square root of 5. We know that the center is at 0, 0. So rather than plugging in 0, 0, I'm just going to write this in there. So I'm just going to write x squared over. Um, now remember, b squared is under this. So therefore, it's going to be square root of 5 squared plus y squared over 2 square root of 2 squared equals 1. Now, square root of 5 squared, well, the square root and um, Square root and squaring are inverse operations. So that's just going to give me x squared over 5. Plus, um, basically here, what you're going to do is you're going to square the 2, which is 4. And you're going to square the square root of 2, which are inverse operations, which gives you 2. So it's going to be 4 times 2, which is 8. So therefore, I have y squared over 8 equals 1. And there we go. All set. All right, so now we're getting ourselves away from vertices and covertices, uh, which is pretty basic to write the equation, right? Now we're talking about foci. So again, we have to go back to our definitions and understand that C represents the distance to the foci from the center, OK? Um, but again, the major uh, operation is still going to be the same. Let's plot the, oh, and no, what's also important about the foci is the foci lies on the major axis, just like the vertices lie on the major axis, the foci lie on the major axis. So if you have your two foci like this, you know you have a major horizontal axis. If you have your two foci like this, you know you have a vertical major axis. So let's go ahead and plot the information. Since I know my center is at 0, 0, my foci is to the right 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and to the left 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Foci, foci. Vertices is 8. I think I might be off of the board here. Oh, just in time. OK, so all we know is that all we have is the vertices and the foci. We don't have the covertices, which is important, which we're going to need to know because b represents the distance from the covertices to the center. But right now, we automatically know that my major axis has to be horizontal. So I'm going to use this formula. So therefore, I need to know a squared, which is the distance from the center to my vertices. So to figure that out, I basically just look at it and I figure out that a is equal to 8. Okay? Now, to figure out c or to figure out b, I have to go back to that formula. Whoa. I have to go back to my formula. I know what c is. C is the distance from the center to your foci, which in this case is 6. So I'll do, let's use blue. I haven't used blue in a while. c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Well, c squared is 6 squared. A squared is 8 squared minus B squared. So I have 36 equals 64 minus B squared. Subtract 64, subtract 64. Oh, man. Uh, dang it. I can't do math in my head. This is like my eighth video. Uh, I'm going to go with 28. Yes, 28. Negative 28 equals negative B squared. Divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. 28 equals b squared. Um, let's see, 4 does divide, so I take the square root of both sides. I can simplify that into the square root of 4 times 7 equals b, which is 2 radical 7 equals b. Actually, never mind. Screw it. Why am I doing that? I always make that mistake. 28 equals b squared. We don't care what b is for these problems. We just care what b squared is. So now we know what b squared is. We know what a squared is, which is 64, because a is 8, so therefore a squared is 64. We know the center is 0, 0. We have all the information we need to plug it in. So it's just going to be x squared over, we know a squared has to be under the x squared, which is a squared is 8 squared, which is 64, plus y squared over b squared, which we solved to be 28. 
equals 1. Done. OK, last one we're going to do is foci and covertices. So again, plot the information. Uh, here you can, oh, that's a comma. You can see it's 0 plus or minus the square root of 3. Again, square root of 3 is going to be between 1 and 2. So from 0, which is my center, again, I'm going to be 1 and 2. That's my foci. There's my foci. Covertices are plus or minus 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So a lot of students will get messed up on this is because we're not, given the co we're not given the vertices, but we're given the covertices. But remember, the covertices lie on the minor axis, not the major axis. So the foci lie on the major axis. And we don't have the vertices, but the vertices are going to be like someplace way up there. The vertices are farther out, remember, than the covertices. But this one always tricks people is because they see, oh, covertices are farther out, major axis symmetry. Major, um, Vertical or horizontal major axis. No, we just didn't put the vertices in there. But if we were to figure them out, which we are in about a second um, or in about a minute, we will know that the vertices go up and down because the vertices, vertices lie with the foci. So if it's horizontal, they're both horizontal. If foci, is, if foci are vertical, that means the vertices are vertical. So again, to figure that out, I got to go back to my blue and use the information I have. So. Um, Let's see, covertices, so we have a squared equals, oops, sorry, c squared equals a squared minus b squared. c squared is going to be my foci, so that's going to be square root of 3 squared. c is square root of 3. The distance from the center to your foci is square root of 3. Equals a squared, we do not know. Minus b squared is going to be distance from the center to your covertice, which is 6. So square root of 3 squared is 3 equal to a squared uh, minus 36. Add 36, add 36. I get 39 equals a squared. Um, we don't need to know that, but we know it's going to be 6 point something. Because um, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49. So we know it's going to fall somewhere in between there. So, um, but again, we don't really care for that. We just know that a squared equals 39. And we know that a squared is vertical. So therefore, we have to use this formula. So now, last thing I'm going to do is I know that my center is at 0, 0, because I told you at the beginning of the video. So it's x squared over my b squared, which b squared ended up being 36, plus um, y squared over a squared, which is 39, equals 1. Notice how the a squared is larger than the b squared. a squared is under the y because it's a vertical major axis symmetry. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you determine the, or that's how you write the equation of an ellipse given different pieces of information. Thanks.